Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm so glad that you joined me on a day such as this to listen to the word of the Lord. And our message today is called Victory Over the World. My name is Pastor Caroline Barclay and I'm here in New Glasgow with Master's Hand Ministry. Today is Sunday, July 17th. And uh, as we move along in the month of July, I'm very thankful for the weather we've had lately. It's been beautiful. I hope that you're enjoying some of this. Today, if you have your Bible handy, I would like you to ask, I'd like to ask you to open to John chapter 16, verses 25 to 33. And I'm going to read from the Good News Bible. So, just giving you a little time to open up your Bible there. So, we're at John chapter 16, verses 25 to 23. And I'll read it as I have in my Bible, and you please follow along. This is Jesus speaking. I have used figures of speech to tell you these things, but the time will come when I will not use figures of speech, but will speak to you plainly about the Father. When that day comes, you will ask him in my name, and I do not say that I will ask him on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you. He loves you because you love me and have believed that I came from God. I did come from the Father and I came into the world and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. Then the disciples said to him, Now you are speaking plainly without using figures of speech. We know now that you know everything. You do not need to have someone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you believe now? The time is coming, and it is already here, when all of you will be scattered each one to his own home, and I will be left alone. But I am not really alone, because the Father is in me. I have told you this so that you will have peace by being united to me. The world will make you suffer, but be brave. I have defeated the world. Praise God for his mighty word and his promise today. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, what a delight it is to read your word and to hear the words of Jesus to his disciples. Centuries have come and gone, yet the word of Christ remains as strong today as it did in the day he spoke. How wonderful it is to know that the world cannot keep us captive, for Jesus has come to set us free. Glory, glory to his name. Amen. Yes, indeed, glory to his name. Christ has come to set us free. And such a beautiful scripture we're given here today uh, that leads into this world, this word called victory over the world which is the title of the message in the Bible. Now, life is full of hardships and circumstances, and most of which we cannot control. With that, I'm sure you would agree. Jesus tells us here in verse 33, the world will make you suffer. And he also said, but be brave. I have defeated the world. This statement should encourage us to look up beyond our hardships and circumstances because Jesus, Jesus has defeated all the world can ever put in our path. So, look up to Jesus, concentrate on him, and let your worries and cares slip into oblivion and you will feel his peace. In the same verse, Jesus says, 
I have told you this so that you will have peace by being united to me. When we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are united to him. We need to know and trust in Jesus to stay true to his word, uplifting us above our hardships and circumstances. After all, he is the only one who overcame the world. In this world of trials and distress, let us be reminded to whom we are united. Jesus, the overcomer of the world. His power in us allows us to face each day afresh with new mercies as we read in Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 to 24. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continue, fresh as the morning, as sure as the sunrise. The Lord is all I have, and so in him I put my hope. Wow, that's a powerful scripture. Fresh as the morning, as sure as the sunrise. Each day is a new start. The sun will rise each morning, whether or not we see it. It has never failed to rise or to set. It is certainly, it, this is a certainty, and if this is a certainty, then so too must be the one who causes such things, the sun to rise and to set each day. As we go and dig into the Word of God, we find the assurances we need to deal with daily pressures of life. Every age group, young to old, face challenges. To stay in a place of rest, we need the Holy Spirit in us. It is through the Holy Spirit that God will help us face our sickness and tragedy, disaster and even death. Verse 33 of today's message says, I have told you this so that you will have peace by being united to me. The world will make you suffer, but be brave, a.k.a. be of good cheer. I have defeated the world. That, my folks, is good news. Now, when we take time to sit and read the Word of God, it becomes like medicine to our soul. Our troubled mind and anxious body begin to relax as the Word overshadows our problems, concerns, and fears. I don't know about you, but all I need to do is to sing an old familiar hymn, a faithful hymn, or one of my new favorite choruses. And my troubles, well, they seem to slip into the background. Suddenly, I am strengthened, lifted, and released from my burdens. God begins to show me what's important in life. He tells me to stop worrying because worry does not change a thing. Now, we don't have all the answers to life's challenges and we never will, but we do have unity with Christ and he has all the answers. As we trust in God, his Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, this helps us to stay strong in our faith. And then our challenges do not seem so overwhelming. Our faith is our foundation. And a good foundation will stand the test of time. So, 
Our message today is victory over the world. What is victory? It's a success over a challenge, be that school, a competition, a struggle, or even more. The best thing about being a Christian? Jesus won the biggest victory for us. We just have to stay on his team to claim our prize, that mansion which has been set aside for us and those streets of gold. So, instead of focusing on ourselves and our problems, we need to help others claim their biggest prize. And we can start by helping them win victories over the little things. How do we do this? We reach out. We help someone who is in need. Cook a meal. Visit them in a hospital or a nursing home. Or lend an ear. Best of all, we share the gospel and we give an invitation to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. We help them to their greatest victory by sharing and showing Christ's love in their, in their little ones. Now I know I tell you this every week to share the gospel and to give an invitation to the Lord, but it is so very important. Life here is short, folks, but eternity is forever and ever and ever. And it is so important to think in terms of being together in heaven and how we do not want anyone to miss out on their heavenly eternity. The gift Jesus offers us is for everyone. And if we have this gift, we are obligated to share the blessing. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 reads, Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of His mighty power. Listen to that again. Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of His mighty power. In other words, stay focused on the Lord, study his word, and you will become stronger every day in your faith. You will better understand his power and how it is in you to draw upon. In that power, you too can have victory over the world. In our weakness, when we stay focused on the Lord, we can call to mind all the times in our lives when we know it was the strength and power of God that carried us through. When we take his hand, he never lets us go, and we will never be alone. This is how we have victory over the world. Thank you, Lord, for this message today. And as I was thinking on this message, of course, there was a song came to my heart and to my mind, and I'd like to share that with you, and, and then we will uh, come into offering the gift of salvation. So I hope this word today settles in your heart and in your mind and, and uh, that you go and you read it over and over for yourself and see what God wants you to understand in it. It's a powerful word, victory over the world. What an assurance we have. And then the songwriter, Victory in Jesus, was the title of the song by E.M. Bartlett. His words in this absolutely speak to our heart. So if you know this, please sing along with me. And if you don't, just close your eyes and listen. I heard an old, old story 
How a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Victory in Jesus. And we have that. We have victory in Jesus, thus we have victory over the world. If you would like to have victory over the world, and you're listening to me today, and you do not have Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, then I would like to invite you into the family of God so that you can claim this, that you can confidently stand even up against the world and say, world, I have victory over you because of Jesus. And all of you that are listening to me today that, that know Jesus as Lord and Savior are well able to stand in confidence of this very particular statement, victory over the world. And I trust that you're sharing those victories that you get every day and that you share those with those that you meet, especially those who are not walking with the Lord. So, if you would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, then I would ask you to bow your head with me and say this prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the message today. Victory over the world. I realize that the answer to the question, how can I have victory? The answer is to give my heart to Jesus and to have Jesus live within me. So Father, today I come to you and I repent of my sins. And I ask, Father God, that you accept me into your family, that the blood of your son Jesus would wash away my sin and cause me to have righteousness in Christ and therefore stand righteous before you. Lord, I ask that you would accept me and that I would be a member of the family of Christ, that I would get to enjoy uh, the walk ahead with sisters and brothers who are now serving Jesus. And may my hands and feet be open to be of service to you, Lord. 
In your precious Son's name, Jesus, I lift this prayer today, and I thank you already for your acceptance. Amen. Well, I trust if you prayed that prayer with an earnest heart that um, you already are wanting to just reach out to someone. So you can reach out to us here at Master's Hand Ministry. You'll find the website uh, on YouTube. Or you can uh, speak with those that you know. Perhaps you have family members or friends that just live down the street and you know that they are Christians. Put yourself in a circle of Christians and let them know that you accepted Christ today and uh, ask them to mentor you, to walk with you, and to talk to you about Jesus. Uh, be sure to buy yourself a Bible and get into the Word of God. Read it and ask Him to reveal to you what it is He wants you to know in the Word. I've been reading the Bible a long time, and every time I pick it up, and I open a scripture and I think, oh yes, that scripture is familiar and this is what it means. But when I sit with it, then today it speaks differently to me. Hence the reason that we have preachers all over the world, all over the world. And how many preachers are there? There are many, many, many. All over the world are using that one book for over 2,000 years to preach the message of the gospel. <clears throat> the book doesn't change. It doesn't get rewritten and, and uh, there aren't a whole lot of volumes to it. The thing is, is to stay in the Word of God and ask Him to enlighten your mind and to give you direction in it. And He will. He will grow you, mold you and shape you to what He sees you to be. Wow, we can't even imagine what that is. And you know, the, the Lord's not finished with me yet. He keeps pushing me forward and asking me to do this and asking me to do that. And there are times when I think, mm, maybe I don't know how to do that. But you know, I've learned that God will never ask you to do something that he doesn't already prepare you to do. You just need to trust him. So today, you can have victory over the world. All you need to do is walk with Jesus. I trust that in this coming week, you will have a good week as you sit and look at our website. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, uh, Spencer will have his something to think about, and that's always interesting. Tuesday, he's back in the Bible study in Romans Lesson 17, and he'll be in Chapter 6, starting at verse 1. On Wednesday, I will have a writing, and on Thursday, we will have Peter's Picks. There's one of those for every day, or you can read all seven, seven days a week. They're always good. And Friday, Pastor Todd's message. So... There's always something on the website, and uh, I thank you for joining us, I thank you for being with us, and I thank you that uh, you look forward, I hope, to every week, and uh, as we continue to bring the Word of God to you in this fashion, we anxiously await the day when we can be together again in assembly. That'll be beautiful. But until then, I certainly enjoy being with you at this time, and I really appreciate it that you take the time to spend with me and with God. Now, have a good week, and until we meet again next week, may the Lord richly bless you in all that you do.